Hello, uh, another reading. This is from a recent book, Upon a Once Time, a fairy tale mashup. Uh, I chose to do two Hans Christian Andersen fairy tales that it turned out I had always confused in my head. The two stories are The Red Shoes and The Girl Who Trod on a Loaf. And so without further ado, here is Red Boots Blues. Red boots blaze, blue shoes glimmer. Shop window, old school. No one buys things like that anymore and they're old style pricey too, you bet. Stick money on your feet, strut around like you're walking on air. Oh, he covets those red boots. Splays dirty hands up against that glass, picks out the words, recruiting office. Could come back late night. Shadow skulk, face painted to fool the cameras. Smash the glass, smash and grab. Who's to say the boots would be his size? That thought stops him. He thinks about those boots all day at school though. Grabs a canister from the art room, pours paint on his own shoes, blood bright. His schoolmates hesitate, not sure whether to hail him cool or tear him to bits. But in the end, those shoes are so red and bright that they snap pictures with their hand phones. And then after school, they all go kick bums down near the canal and their shoes are as red and glossy as his. Not enough, not nearly enough. He wants those boots more than anything else in his life. Maybe there were subliminals built in. Maybe they've been built into him since childhood or even before birth, who knows? All he knows is craving. So he goes in, takes tests, ticks boxes, signs his name, puts the uniform on, last of all, those boots. He becomes a soldier and marches off to do as he is told. His boots are red, and the rest of his uniform is cool steel and matte black. His boots shine red to him and he is proud of them and what they've done. How they've danced death through crowds of enemy soldiers, hosts of civilians, clusters of meat bags, and oh, how those boots shine at the end of every mission. Then comes peacetime. The generals are convicted for war crimes and pardoned and their subordinates are convicted and pardoned in turn, and the blame tumbles down and down until it rests on the soldier and his fellows. By then, they are just brains and metal bodies because that makes it things easier for everyone. A judge has them all switched off, but then people say, what a pity they hadn't been really, truly punished. And so every brain is turned back on, but the bodies aren't. They're made into statues in the center of parks in front of schools. A general struck by the brightness of the boots takes the soldier for his own, props him up in the antechamber of his office as decoration. Children come on tours with their teachers and stare at him and one little girl, only one, cries for him. Says it's sad he's stuck there unmoving, no matter how bad he'd been. Keeps on saying it even when the others make fun of her. He remembers that for a long time. War falls out of fashion and no one comes to the general's office anymore for business or tours or any other reason. Spiders weave webs on the shiny armor and clots of corrosion mar the joints. One day he feels a stirring in his brain, a tendril from the internet poking at it. He's been mentioned. The thread gives him enough energy to creep back along it to look. It is the little girl, the one that cried for him so long ago. She's dying now, be being uploaded, becoming an electric angel. Now she's fragments held together with algorithms. She goes to ground in the overworld, finds herself just an intelligent stealing bandwidth where it can, draining the public utilities where it can, relying on electronic tip jars and gifted bits posting fan art of a white bird, its wings like glitter, its background red and blue trapezoids, sequins and glittering dust. 
He tries to follow her back out, but can't. Takes juice to move on the internet. Takes electrons in the real world to make imaginary ones elsewhere. And energy doesn't fall from the sun without expensive equipment to meter and aid it. They give him juice enough to think that is part of the punishment. That was the point to have him trapped there suffering for his crimes. And every day his angel brings him a new connection, another tendril that reads, reaches out. And instead of taking from it, he feeds it, gives a little of himself to those who still know hunger, still know thirst, still know torments he can't feel anymore. There are hounds on the net. There are sharks that chase down free things created by accidents and excess. They take the angel one day and she comes no more in her rush of blue thoughts, in her sweep of love as broad as a wing. For the first time, he takes a little back of that energy and he weeps until a tear rolls down his face, unnoticed, even though it leaves a trail in the dust there. And it sparks that tear. It sends out an alert to everyone he's ever connected with. And each sends back a pulse, a crumb, a bit. Until one day he manages to take a little bandwidth from the sunlight and the wall fixtures. And he goes out onto the web and sees the world. War is back. And there are those with red boots like the ones he worn. And they still march in the service of others. And their boots are as red as ever. Every day he takes one of their number, a few pixels, a handful of bits, and whispers so quietly they can barely hear it, you can be free where I am not. This goes on for centuries. His memories of the angel whisper comfort and bring him scraps of bandwidth and everywhere boots are red. And then one day they're red again, but this time it is different. This time afterward, they are washed clean with the tears of those who wear them, who kneel, who take them off and put them away. Their color fades and they are blue now, blue as regret and loneliness, blue as the sky, blue as robin's eggs and violets and other things that only exist as data and records. Children see him on that last day they are playing in the data stream. A seagull cries one when they see the white bird as it dives into the stream and rises again into the clear sunlight, white and glittering. But no one can tell where it went then, although another says it flew straight to the sun where nothing is red, where nothing is blue, and there's no thought of anything as ordinary as shoes. All right. Uh, probably next time I'll be doing another uh, writing tip and I'll keep on doing some fiction pieces as well. So if you like them, uh, enjoy what I'm doing. As always, please like and subscribe and retweet and, you know, that sort of thing. Okay, thanks a lot.